Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the 15-year veteran Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers as they match up with Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. So with that, let's get you up to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Standing by for the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thanks. As mentioned, we are on the North Shore of Pittsburgh. It's sold out Heinz Field in the Steel City. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis on hand. And Charles, we've got two teams here, certainly with something to prove after a disappointing 2017. Let's be honest about it. Their playoff aspirations, they went splat, didn't they? They've got to prove now to themselves and to their fans, are they one of those teams that's ready to move back up, or are they one of those teams that really has to rebuild? The veteran kicker, Mason Crosby, set to do the honors here. And with towels waving, we're underway from Heinz Field. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Steelers' all-time leading passer and two-time Super Bowl champ, Ben Roethlisberger, ready to lead this offensive unit. And he's led him since his rookie year all the way back in 2004. They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Here's a second and two now from the 33. This is a guy who made a Pro Bowl in his second season, James Conner. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. That one into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that'll make this a second down. All right, now, black 20. On second down, Samuels. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. They'll run again with Samuels on first down. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Kenny Clark, the big D tackle there to make the stop. And let's get a look at the Green Bay defense. Safety Adrian Amos was a free agent in 2018, and division rival Green Bay took note and brought him to Wisconsin to patrol the center of their defense and also drop down near the line of scrimmage and make some big-time plays in the running game. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. 
Shotgun handoff to Samuels. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two there, and it's third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And they get to him with a pressure as Roethlisberger goes down. Zadarius Smith gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards, and it's also fourth down now. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Tyler Irvin back deep. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Packer offense led by number 12, Aaron Rodgers. And the Pack in an unfamiliar position this year. They have not made the playoffs for two years running. 6-9-1 a year ago. And now with a new head coach in Matt LaFleur, no guarantees certainly that they'll play meaningful football in January this year. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the Pack up first and 10 at the 20. The drive starts with a completion, left side. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. He can muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. And now the offensive starters for the Packers. Durable and dependable, but also elite is left tackle David Bakhtiari. He's only missed six games in his NFL career. He protects Aaron Rodgers' blind side, and he does it so well. In 2018, named first team All-Pro for the first time in his career. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. That throw is not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Rodgers. That's caught by Geronimo Allison. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. Bud Dupree came out of the University of Kentucky determined to let everyone know that they play football there as well as basketball. A terrific pass rusher off the edge. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. All day, every day. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. I'm not sure that you'd call it a trick play, but they definitely showed some imagination there. I wouldn't be surprised if they want to come back and show this play a few more times before this one is over. Rodgers on third down. 
Got a man. That's Allison. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. And now this throw complete to Washington. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Quarterback Ben Roethlisberger, so many wonderful games that he has had in his Steeler uniform over the years. The three 500-yard passing games in his career, and the reason I bring that up is because one of them came against these Green Bay Packers when he threw for 503 back in December of 2009 in a 37-36 Steelers victory. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Here we go, here we go. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They go draw play. This is Samuels. Tackle made by Montrevious Adams. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Let's go. Here's Roethlisberger. Got an open man. It's Washington. A gain of 10. Good for a Steeler first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, you start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From just shy of midfield, Roethlisberger, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Packers bring pressure and they block it. And they'll wind up taking over there in their own territory inside the 40. An early special teams wake-up call there, their first drive, and they have the punt block. And obviously they were giving the ball up, but that's not the way it's supposed to conclude. That ball's supposed to be downfield, better field position for your defense to work off of. Instead, you've given up a momentum play, and now you've got the other side excited. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. 
make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, damn that. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Packer first down. First down, Green Bay. Rodgers will bring him up to the line, first and 10. And he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. The third year back from BYU, Jamal Williams with a carry. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality and pound the rock. Throwing on second and three, Rodgers. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. A 12-yard touchdown grab as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Mason On is Mason Crosby, Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. So that drive, four plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. Touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 27. Roethlisberger will throw. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. It's a gain of 34. That's an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big-time completion. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. On first down, it's Samuels. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. On second down, Connor looking for space. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. 
A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Brings up third and one. That's it. Black 80. Three butt, three butt, three butt. He'll try and run for it with counter. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead him to fourth down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. Boswell signed to a four-year deal prior to last season, but he struggled a little bit. Yeah, do you think that they saw 13 of 20 when they signed him to a four-year deal? Not at all. Needs a big bounce back in 2019 if he wants to see the end of that contract. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Throwing now is Rodgers. He's got the hook up to Lazard. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. Rodgers will bring him up to the line, first and 10. And he's completed all seven of his passes thus far. Rodgers with a give, it's Aaron Jones. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Next receivers, they'll spread the defense out and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. On second and a couple. Rodgers. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. They'll give him a yard on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot. Because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. There's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put there. Yeah, in. didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. Adams hauling it in from Rodgers. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Rodgers finding Adams for a Packer first. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And he will be out of bounds here on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. After 1-7-3, the score on EA Sports. Rodgers will bring him up to the line, first and 10. And he's now 10 of 10, throwing the ball here to start the game. 
Rodgers to throw once more. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Rodgers now throwing again, and Graham's got it, complete. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. The Packers on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and 11. And again, it's Rodgers. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So on now for the Packers at their all-time leading scorer, Mason Crosby. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This fielded at the two. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They'll start the drive with Samuels. Blake Martinez, the NFC's leading tackler a year ago, in on the stop. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Roethlisberger, pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Zadarius Smith able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Now it's Roethlisberger, and he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means.
Here's Jordan Berry now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Oh, the return is Irvin. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. And he comes back with one complete. 11 yards and a Green Bay Packer first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, right he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Rodgers now 12 of 15 throwing the ball, 80% so far, and it's first and 10. On play action, now Rodgers. The connection made, it's Graham. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Jones, and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. The Packers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third down and 12. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And they will advance this across midfield, but still well shy of a first as he's tackled at the 47. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. Call that a very strong gain of 24. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receiver's eyes when he's throwing the ball. White 80, push him back, push him back. On first down, Samuels. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. 
Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. On second down now, Samuels. And he's got this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Packers' 36. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Now, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. Oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They're able to convert with a gain of four. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. That's thrown to Smith-Schuster out wide. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And the Steelers on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and 11. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 21. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Roethlisberger now, 9 of 11 passing in this first half. He's got his guys at first and 10. Roethlisberger. That incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. From the 21, it's second and 10. Now Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. A first opportunity for the Steelers in the red zone. They've got a first and 10 from the 10. To throw again is Roethlisberger. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Roethlisberger throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was going for the tight end, Nick Vanette. Third down here. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying... No more. We're taking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Now it's Roethlisberger. 
Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively brings up fourth down. Well, another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. A 27-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This one fielded at the five. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Off the draw, here's Williams. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. First down. And that's complete to Adams. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the dump off, and it's third down. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball, just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. The Packers on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. 
Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Rodgers gives this to Jamal Williams, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks, hold the point of attack, and get upfield serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. The run hasn't worked the last couple of plays. Now it's third and 14. On play action, it's Rodgers. Looking deep for Adams. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. Last play, they didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Now they gain almost 40 yards here. I don't think we'll ever get enough of watching one-handed catches, and when they pay off, they are spectacular. But how about the times they don't pay off and coaches go, two hands, two hands still works. <laughs> I know, but they, they go for them so often now that I'm almost starting to take them for granted. Yeah, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Because these are sensational type plays. Especially that one with a defender right there. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll run it with Williams. And a second effort gets him in. Touchdown, Packers. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. Nice job of polishing off that drive, but all the credit there goes to that play prior. Yeah, it certainly does, because after that big play, I think resistance almost felt futile at that point, didn't it? And the very next play, they come right back, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and put it in the end zone. Extra point try now for Crosby. It's good, and now it's an 11-point lead, 17-6. to six. A 10-play drive that time, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. And they'll be looking for a tough. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jair Alexander. Johnson was the intended receiver. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Number 12 back out there. Aaron and his Packer teammates set to begin their drive. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Playing well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm. Throw the football, feel good about things, keep things moving in the right direction. Right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. And we'll see if that continues. 
That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Rodgers. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of two, now third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Rodgers going to throw. He's got to hook up to Lazard. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And left side here, it's Graham. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. And that will be incomplete. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's a second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hatch, this from 34. The kick by Crosby is good, and that will get the lead up to 14. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that, and we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. Field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger, the Steeler offense, back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. The first down right run got five. Here's second and five. Yeah, let's get a second. <laughs> Roethlisberger will throw. 
He's got the tight end, Vanan. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So it's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 15 there, and the Packers have a first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. To throw is Rodgers. It's caught here by Adams. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. 
And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And Adams has it. Good play. There he goes, left side. Touchdown, Packers. Devontae Adams, 42 yards. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Now Crosby for the point after. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. Five plays there on that drive. And the result, a Green Bay score. After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Here we go, here we go. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. <laughs> just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Again, a run with Connor. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Good open field tackling there, a 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Out comes Devontae Adams in the offense for their next drive. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll get this out wide to Allison. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards and a Green Bay Packer first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Williams. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The last run got six, now second and four. Again, it's Williams. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Packer first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Now Jones. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now Williams. And an alley to run. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. On first down, Rodgers. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way, lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. On the ground, this is Williams. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Let's pin the mirrors back and go full strength. Look again. Rodgers now to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This a 43-yard attempt. And Crosby puts it through, but hang on, a flag is down. Now, if it's on the defense, they might decline it and take the points. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post 
because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. The roughing the kicker called on fourth down. What a big break. Leads to a first and ten. Into the red zone. It's Rodgers. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They get ten more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Working from the gun, Rodgers. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sacked back around the eight. Vince Williams in there to get him. It's a loss of five. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decide to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. Second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Now Rodgers. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. Back-to-back, -back, great plays defensively. You get the sack on first and goal. A great job in coverage there. All of a sudden, they're looking at third and goal from further back than when they started. And the really good play callers look ahead and down in distance sequence. Now he's got to backtrack a little bit and go maybe off his play sheet to try and dial something up here. And he's got the connection to the tight end, Graham. Touchdown, Packers. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Crosby connects on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it ends with a Packers touchdown. Touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Burger on first down. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. 
I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Now Roethlisberger. He'll get that one complete to Connor. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. And he finds McDonald. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. On first and 10 is Connor. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Ben leaves to counter on the draw. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. On third down, it's Connor. Trying to barrel up in there, but I don't think he got it. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play, and that's going to lead him to fourth down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that drops a deficit from 28 to 25. So his third field goal of the ball game brings him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And sevens, and probably even eights. You know, as a kicker, you just head out when you're called upon, so he's done his job. It's the rest of the offense that needs to get it in gear. They want to close this gap. the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. This will be taken in at the one. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick, and his guys will set up shop at midfield at the 50-yard line. If they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and saying, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. And 
Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at that time, actually. <laughs> well, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. The Steeler first down on a pickup of 11 yards. Zach, Roethlisberger please. now. Five straight completions here in this What's second the half. First and 10. What's the on the draw, Connor. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. After seeing that, maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here. Yeah, anything. Change it up, because the teams that win, the best teams, they're the ones that make adjustments. Doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done. Sometimes when you open things up a little bit, you can get back to what you wanted to do before. That Black 20. Hey, let's get that ball, dude. Let's get that ball right here. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Down to lose one. On third down, Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 16. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. That's thrown to Smith-Schuster out wide. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. They'll run here with Connor. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only a yard that time, second and goal. It's a gain of a yard. Brings up second and goal at the four yard line. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. They come out here in the eye. Line of scrimmage, again, the four-yard line, second and goal. Again, it'll be Connor. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Through a couple of plays, this Green Bay defense is held strong. Now it's third and goal. Roethlisberger. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. James Washington there to make the grab. And the Steelers are able to close the gap just a bit. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. 
Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Certainly no reason to panic. They've got the three-score lead, but... The turnover last time, the interception that led to a touchdown, you'd have to think that might not be dialing that up again. Yeah, probably not. They're still in fantastic shape, though, so I would imagine before he tried it out here for this series, head coach Bob just leaned over to him and was like, listen, we're wearing these color shirts. Throw it to those guys, not the others. Try to make a joke out of it and just let them go out there with a little bit more confidence. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. <laughs> Open here is Allison. That's complete. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. All right, partner, I wasn't good enough to get this done, but I played with plenty of guys who did. When they spotted wide receiver screen and they got to the football fast and blew the whole thing up, the same result as we just saw usually happened. No gain. On third down, here's Williams. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Now this pass to Vance McDonald complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face match. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they're marching off another 15 against your squad. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Zadarius Smith able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. 
In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now it's Roethlisberger. His throw incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now Ben on third and long. He's going to launch it for Washington. That's caught inside the 20. And that one results in 35 yards. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. That one into the hands of Kane. A gain of six there on first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They go draw play. This is Samuels. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. Extra point now by Boswell. And that one makes this an 11 point deficit now. A drive that time of six plays. And in the end, the finishing touch, an 11 yard run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but... Maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. They run on first down as they get about three. Second and seven, forthcoming. The tackle there by Mark Barron. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Uh, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Offense. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, he can't hold him. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. 
bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling. So they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. He's got Adams on the hookup. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 15 there, and the Packers have a first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Rodgers now on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw is Rodgers. To throw again, and that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Throwing now is Rodgers. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They need a touchdown, the two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. The well, first play of the drive there is incomplete. James Washington was the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Now Roethlisberger. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. A gain of four on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Two 
Three first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Ben to throw again. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn to an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And the catch made by Johnson. And he's taken down inside the 30. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Hartney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. Here's Roethlisberger, and he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. They'll bring out four receivers. Three of them being sent to the left, one to the right, second and four. To throw here, Roethlisberger. He finds his man, Johnson. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. A gain of seven, and they pick up the first. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. They'll run on first down. Connor, man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Bear in mind, that wasn't a big lineman back there for the tackle for loss. That was a cornerback. So are you saying the myth has been shattered? That all of them are not just cover corners? Some of them actually will stick their nose in and tackle when necessary? That's what we just saw, isn't it? That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Ryan Switzer there to make the grab as his guys are back within a single score. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets him back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Bob 
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. A throw caught by Kumaro. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. They hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's J.K. Scott now. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So Big Ben and the Steelers now down 34-31, a minute 52 to play. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Running to start to drive is Samuels. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Not in a position where they absolutely have to rush right now, but they definitely have to pick up the tempo a bit. The clock still runs. We're at 90 seconds now. Now it's Roethlisberger. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Big Ben has the knowledge, certainly the weapons to pull this off. We know he's done it many times in the past. And that transmits itself to the rest of the offensive unit because these guys know that with Big Ben leading them, they've got a lot of confidence they can get it done. Back to throw. Johnson's got it complete. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. The previous play is under review. Deontay Johnson. 
Mike's 50, Mike's 50. Let's make these babies cry. Throwing now is Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end McDonald. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Had the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. Still time to go for the win, but they've got to get up and spike it quickly. He'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time, and that'll bring up second down. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. They'll look to throw. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. This defense not going to lag back. They come with pressure that time, force him out of the pocket, and the incompletion. And so many times when you're watching a game, you're seeing the offense doing all the dictating. In this case, the defense said, we're dictating the terms, and turned it loose towards it. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to potentially send us to overtime. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. Boswell's kick is good. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. So in the final minute, they turn it over to their kicker to get him back to even, and he does not disappoint. Brandon, do you think the pressure ever gets to this guy? Because I sure don't. That was pretty smooth right there. But I tell you, he better not rest on his laurels because there's a good chance they may need him again if this game goes to overtime. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Four receivers to keep tabs on here. Three of them to the right side on second and five. Rodgers to throw. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. And here in overtime, 
if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is taken at his four. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. Except for their first drive here in overtime, and this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. Yeah, it's been loud in here so far. When you're trying to win a game in overtime, I don't know that there's too many more in the history of the game you want under center than Aaron Rodgers. Well, I think a lot of it's because he can beat you so many different ways. All right, He can beat you with the big shot downfield. Heck, if you need a Hail Mary, no one throws it better than Aaron Rodgers. But just when you think you've got him corralled in, when you've got pressure on him, he uses his legs to escape and create another big play, whether he's running it or extending it so a receiver gets open. I think he embraces overtime, and he embraces the spotlight that comes with it. Jones breaking from the contact. That one's good for 35 yards on the ground and a first down. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Here's Rodgers. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. They hold him to only two there on the screen. It's second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Looking to throw again on second down. Rodgers to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. Third and eight situation. A tough spot here in overtime on the opening drive. To throw is Rodgers. This is caught. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Hinesville.